So welcome to this part of our Easter service in Skirmley Wimsby Church. So it's a, a welcome from him and uh, So let's begin with the hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today, risen indeed. Well, this morning, this Easter morning, must be one of the most difficult that I have ever experienced. Probably most of us have never experienced anything like this. But there have been others that have been equally as difficult, not just in this country, but all over the world. The good news is that the risen Christ has been with us since that first Easter morning in the good times and the bad times of our lives. When we left Peter and the disciples on Good Friday, the bottom had fallen out of their world, and there will be many of us who are feeling the same way today. But there is still good news to share with each other and a world that's hurting. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting at the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid, laid him, but go and tell the disciples and Peter He's going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him just as he told you. But go, tell his disciples and Peter. Peter was one of the disciples. Why, why was he singled out? Peter was feeling terrible about himself. He was completely broken, ashamed, humiliated by his rejection of Jesus. Peter, like us, in the, is in the perfect place to receive Jesus, empty, broken, and needing someone to help him. Peter had started out with so much promise. He was at the Mount of Transfiguration and saw Moses and Elijah. He walked on water. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome him. 
Probably. Peter had two thoughts. This was a good choice, Jesus. I'm obviously the best among this group. But most probably he felt like this. Are you kidding? Do you know how broken I am? Insecurity was a constant struggle for Peter. Peter's darkest hour started in the Garden of Gethsemane as Jesus was praying in the garden. And once he realized Jesus was going to die and he might possibly be captured, he denied even knowing Jesus three times. It would be one of Peter's deepest regrets. And I think there are times in our life when we feel like Peter, when we feel like the way he did, when we are afraid and feel like a failure. But then we hear the words of the risen Christ. It is I, do not be afraid. And then, like Peter, we move on with our lives and serve God the best way that we are able. As we close today, it is my prayer that all of us will be encouraged. We'll be encouraged this Easter knowing that these difficult days will end. In this passage, I want us to put the name where Peter is. We want us to put our name where Peter's name is. Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Archie, Jesus is alive. Amen. Well, let's join together in prayer. Lord God, you loved this world so much that you gave your one and only Son that we may be called your children too. Lord, help us to live in the glad gladness and grace of Easter Sunday every day. Let us have hearts of thankfulness for your sacrifice. Let us have eyes that look upon your grace and rejoice in your salvation. Help us to walk in that mighty grace. Lord, we lift our hearts to you. As these times unfold, may we carry the unity we share into every moment, knowing that we are one with the risen Christ. Lord, we lift our eyes to you. This Easter Sunday, may this moment stay with us, reminding us to look for your beautiful colors of promise in your word. Lord, we lift our prayers to you. As the dew air falls, may we breathe this day. May we breathe this day in and know that like the earth, you sustain us. Keep us and work within us always. And so we lift our voices to you. We celebrate the greatest day in history when Jesus rose from death, where he defeated darkness and bathed the world in stunning resurrection light. May we ever live to praise you. Lord, in the darkness this pandemic has brought, let your light once again shine as brightly as it did that first Easter morning. Let it shine brightly in all our healthcare workers, our nurses, our doctors, care staff, when they visit those at home or in nursing homes, for all on the front line, the police, fire brigade, council workers, those in shops, for our posties delivering letters from loved ones, all who are trying to allow our lives to go on normally, and especially all their families. Lord, we pray for ourselves and our families, for those who are ill at this time, for those who have lost loved ones, taking a moment of silence to bring our needs and hurts to the throne of grace itself. Lord, in your risen power, fill our lives and bless us through the Holy Spirit, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Will those who love the Lord draw near to this table and hear the gracious words of the Lord Jesus Christ? Come to me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly, lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. When John and Peter approached the empty tomb, their hearts were heavy. Their hearts were crushed with the heavy load of witnessing Christ's death. It seemed an unbearable load had been placed upon them. They entered the empty tomb, unable to comprehend what had happened. The linen grave clothes were there, but where was the body of Jesus? Then their hearts lifted. Was it possible all those things Jesus said about rising from the dead, were they, were they true?
Could they be true? These words which he spoke, they seem only like yesterday, but could they be true? Peter and John had seen the resurrection, but in time they would come to understand the truth of these words of Christ. I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger, and those who believe in me shall never thirst. Those who come to me I will not cast out. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. This is a table of the morning meal, benefit to the body and nourishment of the soul. This is a table of the bread that shall last and the wine that shall never hurt. In this feast comes the root of our joy. In this feast shines the glory of the heavens high. In this feast, the risen Christ is present, the King of greatness. As the Lord Jesus took on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart to this holy use, a holy use and mystery. And as he gave thanks and blessed them, let us draw near to God and offer him our prayers and thanksgiving. Let's join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, out of the fullness of your gifts to us, we make our offerings to you and present this bread and this wine at your table. For all things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Blessed be your holy name forever. And remembering Christ's life and work, and looking for his coming again and pleading his eternal sacrifice, we do this in obedience to his command. By the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, bless and consecrate these gifts, that they may be for us a sharing in the body of Christ, and the cup we bless, a sharing in the blood of Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, where our lives and work may be acceptable in your eyes. So may we ourselves become a living sacrifice, dedicated and fit to serve Jesus. In one body of faith and love, and with those who have gone before, and with the whole church throughout the world, we, your children, gathered at our Father's table, pray you to fulfill your will and purpose in all people, for we ask it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup. This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it, remembering me. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. Do this in memory of him. Take, eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the cup of the new covenant sealed by Christ's blood. Drink from it, all of you. This Easter, I know our greatest request is that we should be together in church and to wish each other the peace of Christ. But the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is in each of us, binds us together for all eternity. May I wish you and your loved ones the peace of Christ this Easter, and may we dwell in the security of the Lord's presence. Let's join together in prayer. Lord, we again hear your words. It is I. Do not be afraid. In these fearful times, thank you, Lord, for your presence with us. Thank you for the indwelling of your spirit which assures us of life, the fullness of life, life eternal. In the days to come, help us to be there for each other, even when we are pushed apart, and to appreciate the new life to come, and may it be lived for you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to sing together now, Thine Be the Glory, that great Easter hymn.
May the God of peace who raised from the dead our Lord Jesus provide us with every good thing we need in order to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.